In a related development, the World Bank has warned the federal government over its slow response to rising inflationary trends currently pushing many Nigerians into poverty and food insecurity. Although the World Bank says inflation in 2022 is projected to be 15.5%, Nigeria's inflation as of May this year recorded an increase of 17.71%, which is higher than the World Bank's projection. With increasing uh, price diminishing uh, the welfare of Nigerian households, uh, this is really worrisome. Uh, let's get talking and joining me virtually uh, to discuss this and, of course, other burning economic issues. I have joining me via Skype, the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Kauri Assets Management Limited, Mr. Johnson Chuku. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for your time. Good afternoon, Tuli, and thank you for having me. Yes, this is not the first time that the World Bank will come up to say Nigeria is not doing something right. Of course, we always get comments from them regularly. But this time around, they are saying that the response is slow. Uh, how fast would it have been or how would the federal government have attacked all of these issues better than is expected from uh, the World Bank? Well, uh, I think what the World Bank is looking at is uh, how we are responding and what tools we are using to respond. Uh, as it stands today, the impact of the global inflationary pressure should not be exacerbated in the country if we respond appropriately. Because if you look at the basic thing, you're looking at consumer price index. So when you talk of consumer price index, you're looking at the consumption of the citizens. And if you look at the consumption part of the country, of country citizens, or the uh, basket of an consumption of an average household, you realize that a greater portion of what we consume, more than 50 billion, is food and food-related items. So what that means is that if the Nigerian government responds uh, forcefully or aggressively to address the issue of food in, uh, production, we're going to bring down inflation and improve the living standard of Nigerians. But unfortunately, we are what we are we're sitting by and watching deterioration in food production. We saw a food inflation of 19.5% in the month of uh, May, uh, which was what part of what exacerbated the overall uh, all, all item inflation to 17.71%. But if you want to consider the food inflation, which is one area the government can reasonably manage, or government action, fiscal actions can address, uh, because today, uh, we are feeding part of the inflationary pressure coming from the Russia-Ukraine war uh, as it relates to the prices of wheat, prices of uh, uh, maize, corn, uh, soya bean oil, and these are items that are produced largely between Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. But unfortunately, if we address the issue of insecurity in the country, if we had addressed the issue of insecurity in the country, we wouldn't be so much impacted on because a lot of food substitution can take place. Nigerians can eat or largely eat locally made food. Nigerians can reduce the quantity of wheat uh, dependent items like bread on their breakfast tables and substitute them with locally made food items. But because we are having worsening level of insecurity, we are having displacement of the farmers, we are having insecurity across the length and breadth of the country, we are pushing away farmers from their farming land into IDP. Uh, entirely displaced people's homes, and they are not able to produce. And for me, that's where uh, the government needs to weigh in. We need to address this security situation so that we will go back to producing the quantity of food that we normally used to produce and cut down on food inflation and therefore improve on overall all item inflation. Mm. Food, that really is important, and I will agree with you. Uh, but the central bank is talking about implementation of all of their policies now, not just agriculture now, plus in the MSME space, in the pharmaceutical space, in the creative space, we can go on and on. Uh, some will say almost all sectors, almost all spares of the economy, the central bank has intervened one way or the other. Are we getting positives back in all of this if we had to do uh, maybe an evaluation? I think uh, we must recognize the, uh, the shortcomings in use of monetary tools to address all economic issues. Mm. Uh, when you talk of structural issues, the monetary policies will not move the needle. Uh, we, what we're talking of now is, is structural policies. Uh, let's take, for instance, we just talked about agriculture, where insecurity has made it difficult for us to realize fully the intervention of the monetary policies as it relates to anchor borrowers. Uh, program commercial agricultural credit scheme and several other uh, uh, targeted lending activities going to the agricultural sector. Because if you are not able to go to your farm, then you, no matter if you get 
flown from Senegal. You may not even be able to uh, do famine if, uh, effectively or even uh, pay back the loans. Uh, so the first thing you must have the assurance of security to go to the farms. So in that instance, the benefit of getting sub-market prime uh, uh, loan is defeated because you really can't get in that economic activity. If you look at issues of other sectors where uh, the central bank is going to using the back of industry to extend credit to the man manufacturing sector and industrial sector, and when you get uh, funding, which is one of the constraints that the uh, industrial sector is, is suffering, but you can't get energy supply to your uh, to your factory, or uh, you you cannot clear your, easily clear your goods from the seaports. These are structural bottlenecks. Today, the price of diesel is about 850 naira per liter. So, uh, at this of what manufacturers will find at maybe 200 naira, 250 naira per liter. So, that sharp increase will make it your cost of production to be uh, to be uh, uneconomical because you may not be able to pass on the additional increase in your cost of production to the end consumers. And in the fact that you got cheap lending from the uh, from the central bank your business operation becomes in, you know, uh, 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 unprofitable and you may end up shutting down. Two, if there's a decline in uh, consumer purchasing power and there's slowdown in consumer demand, you, you will produce and end up in, the, in, in your warehouses. These are factors that are beyond the monetary policies to address. And that's why we talk of structural issues. And what I will talk of fiscal intervention, fiscal policies, uh, effective leadership and governance to address these structural bottlenecks. Uh, the central bank will at best provide cheap funding, intervention funds, but the structural difficulties, bottlenecks that make it possible, difficult for people to do business effectively are constraining the benefit of the CBN interventions. Very, very interesting one. Let's now talk about people being shifted into poverty. Of course, when people can't feed, uh, they will clearly move into the poverty line because uh, uh, food is very important, very essential uh, part of man's livelihood. But we were looking at about 15 million more Nigerians now being pushed into poverty. Uh, what kind of policies do you think government can put in at this time to avert this happening? Or are we just in a helpless situation? Well, the policies we are talking about the same thing we, that we are basically discussing now. Of course, the World Bank is looking at what is driving that data happening into poverty, which is uh, declining the value of purchasing power or declining the purchasing power. Uh, basically, what happens is that where there is high rate of inflation, uh, the value of local currency decreases, and consumers or even households can no longer afford the same quality of goods and services they used to afford, and therefore they are standard living deteriorates. And if that deterioration gets to the point where the income of a, a member of the household, each member of the household is less than $1.5 uh, uh, per day, then the, that family or that person is considered to have gone into abject poverty, uh, which is what is happening today. Uh, if you take, for instance, um, the minimum wage of about 30,000 naira, when that minimum wage was uh, 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 put into place, what was the exchange date then? Uh, I think the exchange date official exchange was still in the region of maybe uh, 280 naira to a dollar, uh, or 179 naira to a dollar. Today, an official exchange rate of 420 uh, naira to a dollar. What does 10,000 naira still amount to? So a person who is on minimum wage has already been put into, uh, in, into poverty. Uh, and so the key thing is we need to have, have a productive economy. We have to have a safe environment where productivity takes place. We need to have some basic infrastructure supply, power supply, which is energy, key energy supply. Those are things that will make it possible for one production to take place, people to be gainfully employed, for us to have some level of stability in our aging days and some have low inflation environment. If you have those all those factors in the economy, then the number of people being pushed into poverty will decline. And that's the key thing we need to realize. We need to get the economy working. And get the economy working, we need to address what they call the heavy lifting. Some of those constraining, major constraining factors, power supply, security, are at the top of the ranking of what needs to be done. And then you have other issues. The issue of, we're talking about the issue of credit, availability of credit, and the pricing of credit, which the central bank is providing. But it's not just that. You have to also look at logistics supply, transport infrastructure. Do we have the rail lines? Do we have the standard 
uh, good roads that will evacuate goods and make it possible to, for you to commit at, at cheaper cost. Are we building the refinery that will make it possible for us to refine our petrol and not depend on what happens to global uh, fuel price uh, locally and have imported uh, energy costs, uh, inflation? Are we, do we have the seaports that will facilitate trade between Nigeria and other countries? So it's us to export what we produce and import with what we need to manufacture and also to consume at the efficient cost. These are factors that the government has to weigh in. If you address those factors, then the rate people will China has succeeded in eliminating our poverty. And China has about a population of about 1.4 billion, several times, about seven times the population of Nigeria. And if they can do it, and gradually India reduced the number of people in abject poverty. Today, Nigeria has become with just a 200 million population. If Nigeria ends up with the 95 million people in abject poverty, it simply means that's close to about 45 million of the population are in abject poverty, about 47 percent of the population in abject poverty, which is frightening. Um, it's almost half of the population is in abject poverty. Uh, and Nigeria has become the poverty capital of the world because we just refuse to focus on the economy. Get the economy right, and a lot of things will fall into place. Mm. Getting the economy right, and a lot of things will fall in place. Uh, 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 Mr. Chukwu, let, let me ask you, just recently, President Buhari openly came out to say that the Apex Bank uh, policies are favorable, citing the fact that uh, they are people oriented policies. We've gotten lots of reactions to this. Uh, investment in rail, roads, and all of that was identified, and of course, in the power sector. I'm looking at it that, uh, yes, you've already talked about some policies that should be instituted, but as we move into a political season, a lot of expectations from our politicians, uh, where are we going to start from? Because I I'm almost confused. We have the big skeleton, the elephant in the cupboard, uh, subsidy, that's there. Removal or no removal, it's becoming a big issue. So when we grapple with all of this, what's your outlook for Nigeria? Uh, of course, uh, it's not looking too good. Well, in the short term, uh, it's not looking uh, not too prosperous. And the, the upside risk is higher than uh, the downside risk is higher than the upside potentials as it stands today in the country. But that's in the short term. Uh, a lot may change depending on which direction the polity goes after the election. Uh, if we get it right with the election and we select good leaders and they are able to enunciate viable uh, private sector driven economic policies, then we should see, see a reversal of the current trend. We should see uh, in confident, uh, confident restore in the economy. We, see, see, we should see investors come back into the economy. And then um, ultimately, we should see the economic growth. We've seen countries that have successfully done that. We've seen the countries that used to be at the rung of the ladder that we are uh, hopeless, seem hopeless. And today, they are the beacons of hope in their regions. Rwanda is one of those countries. In 1994, Rwanda was a very horrible case. Uh, the last uh, place in the world where there was a, uh, a, a pogrom. Um, uh, then you look at a country like Vietnam. Vietnam has become a champion in Southeast Asia today, producing almost everything, including uh, 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 vessels or seagoing vessels. Uh, so we can actually turn the corner and get the leadership right. And that's a critical factor that is holding us back. So the first thing first, get the leadership right and a lot of things. Uh, and then leaders define culture, leaders define the value system, leaders define, because they are also role models, they define the attributes of the society and they create a society. It's all defined by what kind of leaders we get. Uh, if we get it wrong with leadership, then our fortune may deteriorate further. Mm. Uh, oh, finally, uh, before I, I, I let you go, um, let's, um, we've talked about the political season and expectations, uh, but I'm also uh, looking at the challenges I heard. Uh, many saying that, um, Anyone who will become Nigeria's CEO will have a lot to, to, to grapple with, starting from debt issues, starting from some, you know, uh, so this, this, this drastic move, can we be strategic and just know that, okay, we need to focus on power or we need to focus on infrastructure, which comes first, the chicken or, or, or the egg? Well, the infrastructure, uh, power is part of the infrastructure we need to focus yeah, on. Yeah, true. <laughs> a leader, a leader, we have to focus on a couple of things. 
the first thing we need that we need to do is to win the trust and confidence of Nigerians, mm. and that should be won if the person has uh, a landslide victory or Nigerians vote the person in. True. The next True. thing to do is to open the economy to foreign uh, capital, uh, because as it stands today, we do not have the revenue provide to a lot of things we need to do quickly. So we need to open yourself to foreign capital. And we cannot continue to borrow because we already borrowed to the hilt in terms of our debt service to revenue uh, ratio. So if you do that, and then you have to define your priority sectors. One sector should be infrastructure. Uh, one sector should be agriculture. Uh, when I talk about infrastructure, I'm taking the entire government of infrastructure, road infrastructure, energy infrastructure, uh, logistic infrastructure, which are the seaports. Uh, um, you need to address all of them at the same time. And because you are focusing on, you, you, you have created an environment for foreign capital to come in. Foreign capital can do a lot of those uh, that are commercially viable. Uh, and then you f also uh, focus on winning the heart. I, I talked about that as the first thing you need to win the heart of yeah. Indians so yeah. that you can cut down on the level of insecurity, which is partly driven by social and economic uh, challenges, as well as loss of confidence and trust in the government. Mm, great stuff. I almost thank you so much, Chief Executive Officer Carrier Assets Management Limited. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for sparing us your time on Business Nigeria today. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.